Toronto sports on fire right now. Eh, Leafs doing right. There's a lot of hope. You can put a lot of your hope in the Leafs because that's historically worked out extremely well. Sid Sicaro, Breakfast Television. What's up, brother? How are we doing? I'm in a mood, man. Yeah, I know. That's why I want to have you on today. <laughs> so the timing, like, timing could not have worked out better here. Yeah, okay. You and me. Yeah. Like, this is... Um, I wanted to have you on last because I wanted to be like, hey, Con Smythe, and I want to talk about, uh, you know, uh, the Daryl Sittler and Tiger Williams talking and how it make, kind of inspired me to think about playing Toronto sports and pride in sports and what it means. And now it's like it's completely shifted. I don't care about you prepping for your speeches and how you did a good job. It's done. It's nor, just, sh- yeah. nor should you, yeah, with respect. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's your show. I did, though. I watched you up there. I was at the dinner. I'm sitting there. You know, my producer, Armin, covered in his own wine that he spilt all over himself because he got so excited that it was an open bar. Uh, he's like, okay, I guess I just have all the red wine. I was like, yeah, probably pace yourself. Nope. Uh, he was gone by 10, but for those of us that didn't drink themselves into an embarrassing stupor, we enjoyed watching you speak, but yeah, no, that's done now. Nobody cares. We've moved on. It's uh, about Trump. I appreciate sports. it. Yeah. But I did hear, I like the line, uh, that I think you said to Sammy on the, like the, the, the first Leafs post game after you, you referenced the con Smythe and Daryl Sittler speech and, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, the co the, the host of this show, mm-hmm. but you said, you, you know, like the current Leafs, you got to care more. You gotta, you gotta care like that. You gotta care like, like I was talking to Tiger Williams after Mm -hmm. the event, and I said to him, "What you are doing publicly, yourself and Daryl and and Lanny McDonald, Mm -hmm. and when you talk about each other and you talk about Boria, Mm -hmm. like I didn't know you guys felt that way about each other. No, neither did I. Like I said, I was getting uber emotional. It's a gift they are giving Mm -hmm. us because they don't have to." Mm-hmm. But we're seeing it play out in real time, and and obviously with that health scare with with Lanny uh, like seven weeks ago, it was just it was it's an it's amazing to watch, and uh, it was just a great night to be a part of, and uh, yeah, I, I if if uh, I'd be honored to do it again, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, uh, I think you would you did a you did a fine job, buddy. Uh, now yeah. tell me what you're frustrated about. <laughs> That's enough on you. Now oh, time for the enough undies. about me. Yeah, enough so, about you. So two things. Yeah. One. I still don't know why Mitch Marner was that angry at the media the other day. Mm. Okay. That's still, that's, that's still stuck in my craw that I need to kind of air out okay. Two, So Sheldon Keefe during the morning skate yesterday mm-hmm. is saying, we got to watch Austin and it's not about the chase. And he plays over 20 minutes for like the first time in how many games mm-hmm. I didn't like that at all. I don't mind the loss. It is what it is, mm-hmm. but we like this Austin story is not going to get pleasant by the end of it. Hmm. I think. Hmm. So because I about if he this. gets if if he gets close, mm-hmm. what is the priority? Like I did, I did agree with Coach Keith yesterday when he mm-hmm. said, "Look, we got to get everyone ready." I didn't see someone getting ready yesterday. I saw 21 minutes when you probably didn't need it. Mm. So, so I'm that that annoyed me a little bit. Uh-huh. That's that's kind of talking into both sides of your mouth to the media, and yeah. I'm just now I'm confused. Yeah, okay. Now I'm confused. Um, let me start with the Matthews one because I talked about it with Versteeg earlier because I basically asked him from a player's perspective how they would be viewing this chase. And he said kind of a similar thing where he's like, Hmm, you know, like how they handle it is going to be kind of interesting because you really don't want him worn out going into the postseason chasing this. But to me, my position is this one. Um, I think him getting 70 goals actually matters a lot. <laughs> like I think it matters in terms of the success they're going to have that the team is most confident and looks the best when Matthews is scoring a ton of goals. And they, they like, they have something that that is keeping them engaged going into the postseason. I don't think he's going to play the final game of the year unless he's sitting on 69 goals. And I think that the upside of having the team play for something, having Matthews feeling at his very best and feeling this confident and getting an opportunity to do something that hasn't happened since the nineties is like mostly a positive. As long as you make sure what you said is true, that you're not over dialing the minutes that you're not doing it. So, okay. You get your game every once in a while here down the stretch where you hit the 20 minute mark. But for the most part, I want to see, yeah, 18 minutes a night, 17 minutes a night for Austin Matthews. And I think that like establishing that and having him do it under those parameters is actually going to be very important. So I agree with you because it, it can turn ugly. And we talked about this earlier too, which is if you score 70 or you come up short of 70 and then you go into the postseason and you don't score goals, you're right. Then that 70, 69, 68, whatever the hell it is, becomes um, something that people don't look back on in pride or with pride. No, I would, I would agree with that. Now, yeah. But again, like, I want to make this clear. I think you let him play, and I think yeah. you play him the way you've normally played him. Why? Because load management is irrelevant in this league. Yeah. 
why it's relevant in game 81 and 82 when it hasn't been relevant on back-to-back nights the entire season mm-hmm. is something I, don't, I can't quite wrap my head around. Mm. So let the kid play. Yeah. And I still, I still didn't agree with when Mitch Marner was sitting on 99 points a couple seasons back. I didn't agree with that. Let the kid play. Like it just, it's, I, 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 I don't know why it's relevant at a certain point when it's never relevant. I don't want to put you on the spot, J.D. Who's that last game against for Toronto in the regular season? Who Tampa. Play? Tampa, okay. Yeah, it's Florida. If it was Tampa like a Florida-Boston Rangers thing, I'm like, yeah. don't let him go out there and let someone just – Crot, like just slash like Leon Dreisaitl his wrist or something yeah. like don't do that don't let don't give them that opportunity but I don't know I just think like I listen eight goals in eight games seven goals in seven games not easy Mm-mm. but the kids like a machine so I just mm-hmm. this, this has this has given us something amazing to watch considering there's really nothing to watch with the Leafs right now no and everyone knows what the deal is so I yeah. want to thank Austin Matthews for this correct but it could end in a bizarre way yep which could be consistent with how a lot of things go with this hockey club. I hope not. Mm-hmm. I hope he gets 70, a clean 70, and everything's amazing, but we shall see. You know what is, though, is I think that this is, I don't think it's unique to Toronto sports fans necessarily, but I do think that this is part of the psyche of just uh, tortured fan bases is even 70 goals, even the chase for 70 goals, right? Which is like unfathomable. Like my whole life as a Leaf fan I never thought I would see somebody like this, like, you know, um, very in my lifetime, like my recent life, I have been unbelievably excited for a line of Nikolai Kuhleman and Clark MacArthur and, and, uh, Mikhail Grabowski, like that truly brought me immense joy, like true joy. And now I'm watching a guy hit 70 goals and I have the same thoughts as that you do. And I'm going like, how how will this thing that's so great obviously turn into something that will torture me? And that's it. Like, that's just what we are. We are in deep doom cast mode. And uh, the other sports teams in the city right now, I think are all helping bleed into that. Like they all bleed into one another in terms of some of the fan trauma, but there's nothing like being a Leaf fan right now where you go, Hey, how is 70 goals going to suck? And we figured it out immediately. <laughs> how, how is this going to taste? Like the, what's, what's the cough syrup taste awful, but it works. Buckley's, yeah. Like, well, how are we going to Buckley's this moment yeah, yes. where we all <laughs> yeah, hold our nose yeah, yeah. to this glorious historic yeah. taste this young man Correct. is doing? Yeah. yeah. It's very, but I, but I think young. if your opinion is not what yours is, where you're nervous about it, then I don't think you like truly care about the team or you're missing like a part of your brain. <laughs> like, I think that yeah. that's one of those two. Like you had a lobotomy and people like nobody told you and you're just out there in the real world being like, be positive. And you're like, who is that person? I don't understand what that is. Like, I don't know what that, <laughs> I don't understand. But uh, I, I just, I, to be a fly on the wall for those conversations, because uh-huh. Austin Matthews is not dumb enough to have his actual opinions on this leak. Uh-huh. He's, he's not, I don't think he's that guy with the media. I think his actual opinion is shown when he's ripping as many pucks as he can from all and, angles. And the shots night. on goal yeah, at yeah. the end of the night. Yeah. I think, I think that's, think that's letting him know. That's letting you know what the opinion is, <laughs> what he's like, shoot, yes. shoot, shoot, shoot. And 100%. when his teammates are looking off breakaways and open nets to try to find him, I think that the opinion of the room is pretty clear that 70 is going to mean something. If, if I was him, if I like, if I was doing this from a pure HR standpoint, but I or like a yeah PR or whatever, I would tell him to actually sit one of the, the back-to-back that's coming up here. They play a back-to-back on the 8th and ninth. They play Pittsburgh the one night, and then they play the Devils. The problem is, is like, that's kind of a good opportunity to score goals. But I would say, man, if you sit on one of those nights, then we can kind of push you down the stretch because you're always going to be able to say, hey, uh, I load managed one of those ones, and I put the team before me, and that's on the record, and it's done early. I would, I, if I play him against Pittsburgh and if he uh-huh. doesn't get one there, just sit him against New Jersey. Yeah, if he doesn't get like one that. against Pittsburgh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be super consistent at this point. Obviously mm-hmm. if, if, if he hits a roadblock in that game or, or this weekend, or like, I think that's the Jersey game's a perfect time to do it. Mm-hmm. 100%. That's my, what I would do. My true feeling on it though, is just go for it. Like go for it. Pedal the metal. Every go, game. Yep. Suit him every game. Yep. Suit him every game. Go for it. Like uh, be damned. Uh, I'm, I'm very much like, uh, I can't, I'll never forget, um, the Colts, uh, having the opportunity to go 16 and 0 and then playing Curtis painter. And then it completely derailed their season. And I just feel like that there is more chance of that happening with this group. In my opinion, the idea of 
them getting really cute and managing Matthew's minutes and sitting him and telling him like team, 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 and taking your goal scorer, your, your best player, your heart uh, nominee, your Selkie nominee out of his rhythm and screwing it up before the playoffs. Then there is like that cross checker, that, uh, that slash across the wrist that ends up hurting him and derailing him. Like, I get it. We live in fear of those things happening. We're terrified of like the year the Patriots put Wes Welker out there and he tries to run a slant route and he tears his knees up and you go, Oh my God, it screws up the Patriots season. They played him in a meaningless game 17. What's Belichick doing? Um, but I think that the, yeah, the juice is worth the squeeze on this one. And I think that there would be nothing better than having the Leafs go into the postseason where Matthews pops 70 goals. The team is going crazy about it. The city city's on fire because of the chase. They roll that momentum in the postseason. They kick somebody's teeth in, in round one. That's what I want to see. We got, um, in studio tomorrow here on BT shameless plug JD. Oh, if yeah. you'll allow me. Yes. Uh, we have on the couch, Rick vibe, Wendell Clark and Daryl Siller. Ooh. For uh, the Baycrest uh, charity event, I might off camera. I was, I might. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'll keep it together, dude. I almost cried twice during that dinner. Like I almost did. Hold on, you came close to crying. That's your bar. Yeah. Close to emotion. No, I co- <laughs> no, buddy. I would have fully wept had I not been thinking. Uh, yeah, I don't want to look like an idiot weeping at uh, <laughs> yeah, like hockey players. I didn't watch play talking about what it meant to be a Toronto Maple Leaf and brotherhood. I've been alone that night. Like, yeah, I know it's true, but I just, I, with you. I like, was trying I'm, to keep I'm, it together I'm, I'm and it was hard. Yeah. Like, you know, when your throat is burning and you're like, don't yes. like, if, if I say one word, it's going to be waterworks. That's where I was at, where it was like, don't I can't let Armin see me. Like Armin this. was yes. gone. I had already put yeah. him in a cab, but oh, he never even good, got good. that far in the evening. Like I'm talking about, <laughs> he showed up at Armin, six o'clock good. and was like, so this is free. <laughs> and then the rest is history. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, that, so I'm sorry. My point was, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm mm-hmm. going to talk about the event, but the one yeah. hockey question I'm going to ask him is this is mm-hmm. seven eight, and what it means and what would it have meant? Like just their mm-hmm. perspective of that. I'm curious how they're thinking this through. So Mm -hmm. that'll be tomorrow on Breakfast Television. I would say that I'm going to watch, but I'll be doing this show. You will be working. Yeah. Yes. I I have an excuse. I will will watch it, though, after. Okay? Put it up on the internet so that I can watch the the clips. Um, Oh, clips going out. So the Marner thing, you said that one, too. Um, I, I saw the quote, and I reacted. I watched the video. I felt slightly different. Did you have the same reaction? Uh, yeah, the, the, it reads harsher than it, 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 uh, it comes off on the video, but the video is still awkward. Agree. That's the thing. People yeah. kept going, watch the video, watch the video, watch the video. And I went, you know, had I watched the video, my tweet probably wouldn't have been so forceful. I agree, but I'm not a delete tweet guy. And I wasn't going to start being like, here's the thing. Actually, the nuance, I was like, no, 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 this is done. All right. Move it, move it along. Nobody cares. Um, but ultimately I just, my my thought just remains this. He just, he so clearly cares about what the media has to say. And this has been a story with him like time and time again. And we're in year eight of Mitch Marner. And I just wish that he could, you know, not shoot himself in the foot with any of this stuff. Like just get through it without saying something like that. Just get through it by saying, uh, I'm not going to talk about my injury. Bang. Like it's over. <laughs> you know, As soon as you start doing the you guys, and he did it already this season too everyone gets their back up and is like, dude, you don't have your priority straight. Like, I don't know why people haven't been able to communicate that, that to him. Like, don't say you guys ever like take that out of your vocabulary. Just stop it. Well, he better tighten up because it's not like he's going to come back and be on fire. Like the guy was bound for a while. Mm. Like, let's be honest. So, but like it, I didn't. Okay. I'm, I'm asking you a legit question because I'm mm-hmm. not as in the world as I used to be. Mm-hmm. Was, is there any debate as to how he hurt himself? No, like he was backing up. It was behind the net. Yeah. It was, it was a fluke thing and it just kind of happened. Right. Yeah. Like that's, I'm not missing anything. With no the story. No. Then what is his deal? Like, is he mad that Dreger reported it? Is that I, an issue? I think, okay. I, I, I think this is a case of a guy who wants to try to show that he doesn't care, but it shows how much he cares. Right. So yes. he's trying to be like, he's basically trying to be cool being like, he's trying to lay back, smoke a cig and go say whatever you guys want. You know, that's all he's trying to do. Say whatever you want. I'm moving forward. But instead he's like you guys and he stammers through it and he doesn't know how to do it. He doesn't know how to be cool. And then it, it comes out and you're like, what did you just say? And people look around and they're like, so we have to be the ones that interpret that in a, in a 
good, okay spin for you. It's something about the playoffs. You don't want people to know what your injury is. Like, okay, I guess so. Uh, that's where I'm at with it. I just think it's yeah, a guy who is, he's really, he's just really tough with the media. Like, I think he's just not good at it. It's, it's not his forte. He's, he's good at passing the puck. He's good at entering the zone. He's horrific at speaking at a podium. The second you see him at a podium, it's like, you know, when people tell you they can't believe what you do because they have a fear of public speaking and they go, man, like that's actually scarier to me than anything. And you're like, I don't even understand this because I'm comfortable in front of a microphone for him. He's that like, he's one of those people that is coming up to you saying that. Yeah, no, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a very succinct way to put it with him. I, I just, the reason it concerns me is because like the only guy I've seen kind of get into it with the media consistently in the playoffs and still play well is Brad Marchand. Huh. Unless there's another name I'm missing. I don't know. Like that's, that's the only guy I've seen kind of have a to and fro with the media yeah. and still excel and win multiple rounds. Yeah, but his I, is cool. His is cool where he's like, I don't care. And we're like, we believe you. With we him, believe, no, we believe it. Yes. Yeah, with him. I'm like, and he's like, I don't care. I'm like, I've never believed anything less. <laughs> like I, yeah, but we know it's a, different, uh, yeah. it's a different deal with Mitch in this market and he's yeah. from here. And it's like, there's a lot of great things that come with it, like 10.9 mil a year, but there's some other things that come with it. Yeah, yeah. So I just, I'm, cont- I, the only thing, it's, I was with you in that. Like I saw your response to that on Twitter and I was like, I was just kind of laying low on Twitter for a while, but mm-hmm. I completely agreed with you. You do not delete that tweet. No. That is an issue. If people don't think that's an issue, they don't get it. I've been in those scrums. I've dealt with players. I've dealt mm-hmm. with what, like one of the wildest Leaf teams ever with like Corson, Roberts, Sunday, all of them. Those guys, that's, those questions stick with players. Media affects players. Maybe mm-hmm. Nylander's the only guy I've seen who clearly is oblivious to it. And I believe it with him. Mm-hmm. But I, you have to, it's not just winning those games come the middle of this month. It's that every day. Mm-hmm. So you got to deal with the stuff on the ice that gets more intense. And you got to deal with the stuff off the ice that gets more intense. Mm-hmm. Those scrums are only growing with every round. Then the news people show up. Then the cameras that haven't been around show up. Then the folks who don't know like what you like to be asked and what you don't like to be asked, they just throw it at you. Mm-hmm. That's all real. And I get a little concerned when on something as innocent as how are you feeling, mm-hmm. everyone's got their back up. I think that's a problem. Mm-hmm. I think that will hurt you. I think it's a focus thing. He's one of the best players in the league. Shake it off, man. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, it was just, I thought it was a really strange moment. And I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because what he's coming back from is not easy. Uh-huh. It's not easy high ankle sprain. But it's the other thing I was just like, I'm glad you tweeted that out, J.D., because I agreed with you 100%. And it goes back to, I, we could spend the next hour and a half on the media and the Leafs in the city. But... Mm-hmm. It just, it, you got to shake off some stuff here, man. Sure, but I okay. got to shake it off. I, I actually, it's funny because I don't think that the media is like, the, I think that they've kind of invented a boogeyman. And you know this because you know media people, and there are some people in media that are the same, where they like invent boogeymen, right? And you're like, that's not real. Like, you don't need that. And they kind of like obsess over stuff, whether it's like the people who tweet at them or, you know, uh, a, a, a rival, whatever. It's just, it, it becomes like an obsessive thing. And I think for sure. that for Mitch, yeah. that's just been something always is that um, his version of like us against the world, which is like a very common athlete mentality um, manifested itself into you versus the media. And I think a lot of it was from when they struggled in the playoffs to start, but also when he signed the contract and people were blown away that he made the, the 10.9 and instead of realizing that it was like that was the entire market reacting that way, it got turned into, well, that's the media, that's the media, that's the media. And for him, I think that when he's playing the game, he's not thinking about the media. I think he can compartmentalize then. But I do think that the stuff outside of it gets in a little bit easier with him. And where that shows up will always be a point of curiosity for me with his career and whether or not he can handle it. Because you're right, some guys can hack that pressure. Some guys, it becomes something that they get obsessive with and my understanding of him. And this isn't just through this instance. This is like basically since the contract is that he's always had a difficult time or a more difficult time than his peers on this team during this time at shutting that stuff out or dismissing it and just going like, Hey, who cares what this person wrote about my night? Um, 
I, I'm not going to think about it for longer than the five seconds that it crosses my phone screen. Like, I, you know, I agree with you. And, and, you know, we're talking about managing minutes a lot with the Leafs. Mm-hmm. I think there should be legit conversation internally. And there may be. Forgive Like, there might be. But I would assume there's talks about which guys you throw out in front of the media during this postseason and oh, how sure. often. Yeah, for sure. But I, they don't I try to throw like, out there too often. Because they no, know. No, no. Yeah. But, like, but people ask for Mitch. Like, I get it. Uh-huh. But I think, but look, give him, like, Max Domi's pretty good with the media. Yeah. Like, I don't, like not a lot, like, phases Max. No. Tyler Bertuzzi doesn't seem like it's phased by much in front of a camera. And, and you know, like, Austin's pretty, like, I just think it's a grind everywhere yeah. is yeah. what we got to remember. And we don't talk about it enough. Yeah. And it's, and give Mitch some days where it's not him in the scrum. And, yeah. and I think he'd be fine with it. Yeah. And I think it might help him because he's going to need some time and, I don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a nothing issue. I know some people are going to listen to this going, ah, it's a typical Toronto. No, no, no. Yeah, whatever. This, yeah. These are things you've got to manage. Yeah. Because you, unless you've been in it, you have no idea what you're hey, talking about. Hey, guess what? We can't be critical of uh, Marner being too obsessed with what other people say and then us uh, couch what we're doing by being too worried about what other people say. That just seems Completely. like uh, kind of no, no. stupid. Yeah, we yeah. can't play that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, sure. I was like, we got to got to let it fly if we're going to be letting it fly yeah. about this. Okay, so uh, I got a bunch of other things for you. Um, one is uh, about Stefan Diggs. One is about Vince Carter, and one is about the Blue Jays. Where do you want to go? Because we're not going to have time for all three. Quickly on Diggs, it was time. Okay, yeah. It was time. The, I, I read the, the one thing that, that, that just hit me in the face yesterday was – how many cap penalties they're they're going to get hit with doing this now? Oh yeah, uh, I couldn't believe that. Hold on, I have it in front of me because I actually kept it's this one in the incredible. notes. Thirty-one million dollars against your cap next year. And what was the date to wait? Like June first or July first? Yeah. yeah. So, like <laughs> and then it's so, insane how yeah. they didn't care about that. They just wanted to get his ass out. Yeah. Andrew Brandt tweeted that the Packers' nine wide receivers, by comparison, will count for eleven million on the cap next year. <laughs> That's a tremendous number. Yeah. Um, so I want to, I just, I, I want to shout, you know what? I, I, and I also want to shout out Malachi Flynn. Okay. Hold, hold on. Hold on. I, I want to get, I want to get there. I want to get there, but Sorry. I want to stick go on ahead, the Bills thing for one second. Go ahead, go um, ahead. Can you name the Bills four receivers right now? Can I name the Bills four receivers? Yeah. They got four receivers on the roster right now. Can you name them? That's Gabe Davis and Stephon no. Diggs. Yeah. They're gone. Uh, I, I, mean, I could have gotten one. The tight end? I could, no, 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 I could have no. named one, by the way. I Before yesterday, I was not aware that uh, three so of them. Who, who do you got on the roster right now? I had. Yeah. I knew Khalil Shakir. That was the only guy I knew, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I knew I him. I had some catches. Um, yeah, yeah. Here are the other three guys that will be playing with him, barring some draft picks, which I'm sure they're going to bring in some draft picks. But uh, yeah, it's uh, Mac Hollins, formerly of that one time with the Raiders where he caught a touchdown pass, and then people were like, oh, he's tall. And then he went to the Falcons, I think, and was kind of irrelevant. Uh, KJ Hamler. Famous from doing nothing in uh, Denver. Um, and Curtis Samuel, uh, who was with Washington for a while. And, uh, hey, every once in a while, I'm had a game. Um, zero guys that have ever been owned on more than, uh, you know when you see in your fantasy league, like owned by percentage? It's like 5%. Well, but with I, that said, I think, yeah. I think we all at one point owned Hamler. With respect. Yeah, like, yeah was, because people thought Ross was going to be great So at the very beginning, but then he literally, that's his legacy is that yeah, he was drafted as a lottery ticket and then no, and then he was maybe the most dropped player ever in week one <laughs> that was not injured yeah. in fantasy football history. So yeah, those are your, those are your receivers. This is my question though. I texted this to Ariel yesterday and he kind of was like, nah, he's a Bills fan. And he, he's like, he has a legacy, but what do you think Bill's, uh, sorry, Diggs's Bill's legacy is though? Because for a while there it was like, man, this is going to be the, one of the best pairings ever. But then it sort of goes out on a sour note. The Bills during uh, Diggs' time with the team is like no success. I'm sorry. Like, you know, Nick Wright did a good job of outlining like there's nine teams ahead of the Bills that have had more success than them from a playoff standpoint from uh, during that era. Uh, Like, is he going to be a guy that comes, it it ends with him kind of being mercurial and weird and he has the huge drop in the final game. Like if he shows up at, you know, the uh, tailgate, five years from now, are people going to go nuts? Like what's the bills fan relationship to him by your estimation? I think his legacy is him looking at the Kansas city Chiefs celebrate in the most famous still I photo the same of the bills era. I thought the same That's thing. It. Yeah. Now it's some, it sums up a lot of the team's yeah. uh, uh, successes and failures, no doubt. However, when I think of Stefan Dix, that's that's the picture. Yeah, that's the photo. That's the imagery. Because we, because a lot of Bills fans were like, "You won't forget that. Mm-hmm. They won't forget that." And you know, it just kind of hasn't it hasn't played out the way they thought. Mm-hmm. He 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 was not as good as they thought he'd be. Mm-hmm. 
period. Uh, Josh Allen was chucking at certain points, and it, it really it could have it could have worked to Stephon Diggs' advantage. But I think as an organization, if you have a 31 year old wide receiver that doesn't want to be there and drops the biggest pass of the year, mm-hmm. it's probably time. Yeah. Now they clearly like, but when I see stuff like this, I'm like, whoa! Did they see something at the combine that other people didn't see? There or they were like, we need to get this there. guy out of here before this gets ugly and we get bad but PR. The cap alone, yeah. JD, that cap hit alone uh-huh. on Stephon Diggs. It was, it was just, it, it was panic to get him out of there. So I'm, I'm. Listen, you're probably right too. Yeah. But I think they saw some real options. It's a deep uh, wide receiver draft. And, it's, a, it's a really deep wide receiver draft. That's yeah. what everybody says. Like it's, it's like extremely deep. Cheaper, good yeah. calls they can make. Yeah. And and we'll see. And listen, they they can't do the Green Bay thing with Allen and not give him people. Like yeah. They got to give him people. Yeah. So uh, I think I think it was the right time to end it. I think the Bills put him in as many positions as they could to succeed. Yeah. I think in the biggest moments he wasn't there, mm-hmm. and that will be his legacy. He wasn't terrible, mm-hmm. but he wasn't what they needed him to be. Yeah, but it's like when you think back on that era of Bills teams, it is that still shot of ah, oh, what could have been. Staring at sure. that and going, 100%. yeah, what 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 could have been if, you know, there was two less seconds on the clock. Um, okay, so you wanted to say shout out Malachi Flynn because I just thought this was a twist of the knife for Raptors fans that are enduring um, some of the most painful losses ever. It's like you lose 133 to 85 and then you're like, I'm going to log off tonight. And then you try to close your laptop and you just see Malachi Flynn scored 50 points. You're like, cool. <laughs> Thanks. In a loss. Yeah. In a loss. Yeah, I know. It's, dude, it's Malachi. <laughs> if, if you think yes. your, my opinion's changing on Malachi Flynn because he scored 50 points for a rudderless <laughs> Pistons team in a nothing game, you, it's not a dude, thing. You, you and I both know in some fantasy basketball league this year, a deep league. Oh, yeah. Somebody picked up Malachi Flynn oh, for a God, start yeah. last night. Yeah. Somebody. And may have just won their league. Yeah. What a story. Anyway, yeah. shout, shout out for Malachi. That was, uh, that was nuts. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. I um. Think- I like I like Sorry, Malachi. Oh, I was just gonna say I liked Malachi. I had nothing against him. Um, yeah, me too. Me I, I I think he suffered from he never got Nick Nurse's trust, and Nurse never gave him a shot, and probably hurt his career. But his legacy, if you want to be real, is that Masai took him over Desmond Bain one pick before, and that's yes. tough to ignore, especially when all the draft Nick guys like everyone was like take Desmond Bain right now, and then they were like Malachi Flynn, and I went okay, and then yeah. Anyway, uh, that's the Malachi Flynn story to me. That's a, yeah, a miss. Yeah. And he had a great night. Yeah. So good on him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, well, with you. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to skip Jay's cause I got so mad about Jay's. I'm going to ask you this. Um, you were there, you were there during the Vince actual quitting on the team. And did you see Grange's tweet yesterday? He dominated it. He went out there and he just like crushed it, uh, over the fence. Uh, it was, it was a amazing, amazing, amazing thread about how we overstate Vince Carter's importance to this country. And like, if it wasn't for Vince Carter, you know, we'd still all be living in caves not knowing what basketball would be. Uh, but he, he's going to go in the Hall of Fame. He's going to be the first Raptor. He already said he's going to go in as a Raptor. Um, where are you on Jersey retirement? Because I would just like to say I'm still against. Like, I will always be against, and I will never change my opinion on it. It's going if, to, if, as long as Masai's there and Larry, it's going to happen. He's, I know it Jersey's is. going to get retired. I know yeah. it is. But that's a night where, you know, there's some people that are going to want to be there, and I get it. You can forgive and forget. But to me, it's like you certainly never hang the ban- the jersey of a guy who quit on your team and set your franchise back like a decade. And to me, it's like I, I can't I can't forget that. Like I I just can't forget that and honor it with like thank you so much. And I don't like the revisionist history with Vince. Like you know how he's got the oh and I actually wanted to stay and I didn't really quit on the team. It's like no no, no he yeah. Did. Like hundred percent. Yeah. Did. Yeah. You were faking oh, injuries. Did. You were telling yeah. guys the plays, you were a huge malcontent and it was to the point where you got forced out of town and they got nothing for one of the biggest superstars on the planet at the time. Like I, I just hate that. It's like a, Oh, it's a two sides thing. And it was, uh, you know, the Raptors really are the ones who fumbled this. And it's like, no, I, no, I was there. I remember it. Yeah. Like I still, the, the most unnecessary move of that whole exit was, Telling Barry Davis he's not dunking anymore. Yeah, like that's. I'll something. never. Yeah. I will never forget that scrum. Barry uh, got gold in that. There's gold in them hills. Yeah. Like, what do you? What do you talk? Like, even if that's true, don't say it. Yeah. What, are you, what are you doing? Don't say it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of revisionist history. But I'm my my thing is this. Yeah, I've heard way too many NBA players on the court from this country mm-hmm. talk about that era. For sure. Way like not, it's been, I, I have, I was anti Vince retirement for a very long time. Yeah. Very long time. Okay. 
I've come around. There was something in the air at Scotiabank that night when mm-hmm. he was there, where I believe yep. it was Memphis. And I've slowly turned. Okay. And I think it's going to happen. Oh, I think it's going to happen. I think in, it's a lot. In, in the good times, mm-hmm. it was just magic. Mm-hmm. That can't you can't deny that. No, I'm we not. We can focus on the bad things. Listen, Jose Batista's exit wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Josh Donaldson's exit wasn't great. Mm. Yeah, I can, but I can make the argument Josh Donaldson did more in X amount of years than a lot of Jays did. Agree. Like I, I just you can't deny that MVP season. Mm-hmm. Like what was 121 Dalmatians? How many? How, I forgot how many RBI had. Yeah, but it was insane. Yeah. So like I like I think with Vince you have to look at that. I think he's a borderline Hall of Famer. I think he just gets in. Mm-hmm. Just. Gold medal, uh, mm-hmm. rookie of the year, the dunk the dunk out. Well, gold medal is not nothing. Yeah. Kind not of every is. NBA player that's gone to get a gold medal has gotten it. Most I will say, have. here's here's what I would say, is Team USA gold medal means a lot less than every other country gold medal. Can we agree on that? Like, Team USA basketball medal? Well, I, I don't agree because you have to get to that point to make that team. All right. It, it, that's my that's that's yeah. my only return to serve to that. Yeah. But I hear what right. you're saying. Yeah, no, no, I, I get you. I feel I feel um, that I agree with that. So I I'm happy he's getting in. Uh-huh. And Billups, love Billups. Yeah. Oh, who didn't um, love Billups? He's great, yeah. and I I just think I'm good with it. Yeah. Because the good I thought I've come to this conclusion, JD. The yeah. good times outweighed the negatives. I agree in terms of impact. I agree in terms of what he meant to those players. I agree that he was the first thing that turned it around from the Raptors going from a joke to something fun. Um, he brought in so many casuals that wanted to see him. He was so high flying. He was so incredible. Um, I like even now when we did the like Anthony Edwards dunk and we talked about who are the best in game dunkers of all time. My brother and I had a phone call and we just laughed because we were like, man, you know, my favorite first player ever was Sean Kemp, who I think is the most powerful in game dunker ever. But like some of the stuff Vince would do in game was laugh like go watch his YouTube today. Like go watch Vince in game dunks. And you're like, that was the thing that was happening. It's like, yeah, it was, it was happening. Uh, I think it's just a two things can be true thing is that you're awesome. But to me, if I was running a franchise, I'd be like, we have to have a standard of if you quit on the team, you're not going up and you're certainly not going up first. And yeah, uh, I wouldn't do it, but I'm petty and I'm, <laughs> I'm bitter. Uh, and like I'm, I said, I, I'm just I as, dude, you and I can have a petty off. I'm yeah, with you. But I, I we just, live on yeah. petty town. I know I, they're I going to it. do it. And I don't think it's the world's worst thing anymore. Like it's fine. You're right. The good, you're, not that's the right Kyle. perspective. The good does not outweigh the bad. Kyle. But that's There's the thing. There's got to be priorities no, to this. I think they got to be like that, that's, do my only, that's my only stipulation. Guess what? They're going to do it for Kyle, though. For Kyle, they're going to do it for Kyle. They're going to do it for Kyle. I, I see that. I disagree with. I I, I agree I disagree. with disagreeing, but I telling I'm telling you that they're doing if they if they're doing it, they're doing it before Kyle. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Like time timeline wise, yep. Yep. you are correct. Yep. I just there's something about that that rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. But uh, that's my only stipulation. I mm-hmm. retire the number. You gotta wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. get, that's the penalty. Yeah, that's the penalty. You just gotta wait a little bit. You gotta I, wait a little. I agree. Bit. I agree. I agree. Uh, hey, Sid, thanks for making time today, brother. I always appreciate it. I uh, promise me you're gonna call me again about the Jays. Yeah, we are. Hey, promise hey, me. Hey, guess what? Here's my guess. <laughs> We're gonna have a lot of times, a lot of opportunities to openly be frustrated <laughs> about the Jays. I don't think that this was like, a, oh, we missed the one window where you could have sounded off on the team. I think it's going to be like, hmm, yeah, uh, you'll, you're right. you'll have your you'll have your time to shine. You're okay. right. The segment, my, my, my favorite word of the week, the segment was an outlier. Yeah. We will talk yeah, about yeah, it yeah, again. It was an outlier. Hey, they yeah. was just doing their what they thought was their best chance to win, and they got yes, uh, a, one hit. It was good. It was a great hit, though. Wow. Flair yeah, to the left. Hit. Yeah, that what he was hit. like Not praying on. He flared it out there. They almost got no hit twice <laughs> in the same series. Good stuff. Outlier. Uh, Sid, thanks for making time, brother. Uh, looking forward See to BT tomorrow with all those Leafs legends. No, it's going to be fun. Take care, man. See you, buddy. Sid Sixero, BT.